So I, uh, I originally chose design as my profession because I thought it would allow me to create the world that I wanted to live in. I grew up super poor in some pretty dark circumstances, and I spent my youth chasing the opposite side of my upbringing. I dove headfirst into design and its association with, uh, with material goods when it comes to status in society. Everything I did from my relationships to my jobs was, uh, was more of a status symbol than it was anything else. But one day in New York City, I lost everything. I lost the relationship, the girlfriend, I lost the job, I lost all of my friends, I lost it all because I invested in the facade of who I thought that I could become. The journey from that day in New York to standing here before you today, it's been a little less than two years, has been one of the most self-evaluating and pivotal moments in my adulthood. And somewhere intermixed between the words of Gertrude Stein and subatomic particles, I've come to the realization of, uh, of my purpose. And this is a story of how I've come to find that purpose in deconstructing design. <clears throat> so design in of itself is an idea, right? And everything in our world has been designed. But a design in of itself is useless without the material to go from concept to reality. So we have to think about material. Material, it's matter, right? Science 101 tells us that matter is two or more molecules. The molecule is two or more atoms, and an atom in of itself can be broken down to more or less nothing, right? So what I realized was in that pursuit of material goods in New York City and that life that I was really chasing nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> that realization really created a very bleak look at existence, and I really had to find a sense to, e to even live at that point. So I thought, I thought to myself, well, I have emotions, I have sensations, and I have feelings. If everything is nothing. What am I feeling? Right? This, personally speaking, I realized the majority of how I felt about everything had nothing to do with me feeling anything, and I was purely taught how I felt and thought about everything in my life. Right? It had nothing to do with me. So I challenged myself to really think for myself how I felt about everything in my world. And what I came up with was this idea that nothing is different. Everything is the same in respect to its category. That means designer clothing and hand-me-downs cover my naked body just the same. But then it struck me that something exists within humans that doesn't exist with anything else, right? Something that science can't break down, that's something, that's something real, something unique, something special, that when I think about people and the relationships that I have, that something different happens. What it is exactly isn't that important, but the fact of the matter is that it exists. It exists. But the big idea for me is that that thing is built in human connection, and human connection flourishes in relationships. So then I had to think to myself, what does it mean to be in a relationship? A relationship, I mean, to me, in my, in my previous life, was basically looking at the idea of, of like minds or like tastes or social gatherings or social groups and everything going back to sort of that status in society. But then I started thinking about that. It's a great way to relate but it's not a great way to keep a real relationship. It's shallow, it's cheap, and ultimately lacking. So I had to really think for myself, what does it mean to be in a real relationship? And for me, it was understanding resulting in love, right? And how that is built is between two words, intimacy and transparency. Transparency is being 100% see-through to yourself and allowing other people to see who you are really, right? It's the idea that all of your fears, all of your, your insecurities, all of your prejudgments, they're fake. <laughs> they're built in something that doesn't really even exist, right? And the sooner you come to terms with that thing, the sooner you can start to really love yourself and to really love others. What that does is it creates an ultimate intimacy. And intimacy to me is allowing someone uh, close to your heart. For me, it's allowing yourself to love yourself and to love others and to give love as well, right? Those two things in themselves will ultimately root back to the concept of unconditional love, right? Bringing us to unconditional love will demolish everything that we think about love itself, right? And how I've come to, what I've come to realize is that love to me seems to be more with this idea that I'm in love with love, but not love with anything to do with that person. I love love. I don't love people, right? Through intimacy and transparency, I realize I really do love people. <clears throat> so material, design, social media, common interests, and tastes are great ways to relate in relationships. 
But if all the material we pursue, it's a, it's a wonderful added bonus to our lives. But if we allow ourselves to be in these relationships that I discussed, all of a sudden those things become a nice addition and no longer your definition. In closing, I'm by no stretch of the imagination perfect at living this way. This is a new revelation for me, right? My whole life ahead of me to live in this style. But I've begun and I will share with you how that has changed my life to this point. Number one, I realized I have a real sense of love towards everyone. What was getting in my way before was a misguided judgment of people based on a misguided insecurity and prejudgments. We have all of our stuff and none of it really matters. Deep down, an incredible person lies in every single person on the earth. Allowing yourself to be transparent and intimate is an ultimate freedom. Realizing all of your stuff, owning it and sharing it, is tr it truly does release you from it. We're not defined by our past and misguided emotions in self and others. We rather realize that experience is no longer painful, but rather crucial. And lastly, relationships make a community. A relationship based on intimacy and transparency can build a community of the same. And we need this community before we can finally enjoy and flourish in the one that we're currently in. I'm J.D. Elquist. Thank you.